السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My beloved brothers and sisters it's important for us to know that in this world we have been drifting towards materialism in a great way simply because earning and spending has become something that focus has been maintained upon and it's not wrong to earn in fact it is a duty for us to earn a living that is halal talabu kasbil halali faridatun ba'd al farida to earn a halal sustenance or livelihood is an obligation over and above the other obligations that the Almighty has placed on our shoulders. But my beloved brothers and sisters, it is not the main aim. If you take a careful look of this worldly life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls it a deception. Because we are here, we wonder how is it a deception? But I want to explain to you, when you came onto this earth, you were unclothed. They had to clothe you with clothing that they found on earth. Whatever I have on me right now, no matter what it is, we found it on this earth. And we will leave it on this earth. We came from somewhere else and we are going to go back. So we shouldn't become so attached to something that is actually very temporary. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا هَذِهِ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا لَهْوٌ وَلَعِبٌ وَإِنَّ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةَ لَهِيَ الْحَيَوَانِ لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ Indeed, the life of this world or this worldly life is nothing besides play and amusement and the real life is actually that of the hereafter if only but they knew where was i a year before i was born where were you a year before you were born <laughs> has a time not passed before where man was nothing to even be mentioned no one has mentioned you prior to your birth they didn't even know you were coming you didn't know you were coming allah knew when you came onto the earth allah says awalam yaral insanu anna khalaqnahu min nutfah fa idha huwa khasimun does man not see that we created him from a single droplet of semen and now that he's grown a little bit bigger suddenly he becomes argumentative who were you and who are you calm down calm down prepare for the day you're going to go back to Allah that's the message let's not think we're too big because of a little bit of money we've made Let's not think we are too powerful because a little bit of a position that Allah has given us. Let's not think that we are greater than everybody else simply because Allah has given us something in this world. No, true success is the success of the hereafter. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says anyone who gets their book in the right hand, they will be the ones who will be the ultimate, the ultimate from those who succeed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us true success. So in this worldly life, a day will come when you will suffer a loss. And days will come when you make a profit. You have a good job. You have a brilliant income. And suddenly one day, everything comes crashing. It's just Allah testing you. Allah emphasizes by saying, we will definitely test all of you. With what? A little bit of hunger, a bit of fear, loss of wealth, loss of lives around you. This type of loss, difficulty, hardship, whatever it may be, 
warfare that happens in another verse Allah speaks about it sickness and illness similar to these that we are facing right now may Allah grant us all cure and may Allah protect us Allah says we will test you so a day for you a day against you if you are healthy your health will never ever remain forever if you are alive your life won't remain forever in this world you have to go somewhere else similarly if you're a person who has wealth you're not going to remain rich forever you have a job it's not going to remain forever Allah says we will have to change the days you know regarding warfare Allah says the days Allah rotates them around for the people a day you win a day you lose a day you gain a day you lose and so on why it's a test when Allah says I have created you to test you wallahi when you mature a little bit and you think about it it is absolutely true Allah has created you to test you because nothing happens according to your liking it happens according to the liking of Allah your very identity was chosen by Allah who are you your parents your complexion your race your nationality whatever it is that you did not have a say in it I can only not have a say in something if it is an examination if it was my own thing I would have a say in everything you get the point you have an exam of any nature on earth you'll never know the questions in advance Unless you're in South Africa, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. I see the uncle saying if you have the money, but in the eyes of Allah, obviously that's on a lighter note guys. But in the eyes of Allah, you cannot cheat, you cannot deceive. It's a test. Allah's watching. Nothing that is displeasing to Allah is worth it. Nothing. You know why? You're compromising the hereafter. The eternal hereafter. Nay, Allah says, you love that which is right in front of you now, but you're forgetting about the akhirah, the hereafter, which is everlasting. In Surah Al-A'la, which we hear at times in many of the salawat, especially Jum'ah and Eid, a lot of the times we hear it, Allah says it in there, that you know what? The akhirah, the hereafter, is better than this life by far. So, my brothers and sisters, don't be deceived by the materialism around you. Use it in order to lead a comfortable life within the obedience of Allah. May Allah grant us all good sustenance. Say Amin. May Allah give us wealth that is sufficient for us and wealth that we can use to earn paradise. Imagine Uthman radiallahu anhu. He bought the well. It's a long story. I'm not going to get into it. The Prophet ﷺ says, who is going to buy this well and for them is Jannah. He bought it. For him was Jannah. He came on another occasion. He brought so many thousand camels in order to serve in the cause of Allah. And for him was Jannah. Not once, more than once. Do you know that the endowment on his name is running to this day? Subhanallah. To this day. What type of barakah is this? What type of blessing is this? He was a man. I was reading about Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak. Rahimahullah. One of the great predecessors. They say he was so wealthy, but no one knew. Very few, only his close circles. A year, he would come out for sabilillah, And a year, he would go for hajj. Subhanallah. And he would spend his wealth. And he would send amounts. And people wouldn't even know where's this coming from. My brothers and sisters, don't you agree? The most favored from amongst us is the one who has the best of both. The best of both. Imagine if Allah has blessed you with a bit and you're leading a comfortable life and He's given you the opportunity to actually worship Him with goodness. Isn't that a favor? And that's why when we are taught a dua, Allah speaks about hajj. May Allah take us all for Hajj and Umrah. Amen. And in Hajj, you know that the dua that you make is actually very important. Remember one thing, not every place that you're going to make a dua is equivalent, is equal. Some places are more noble, more spiritual, more elevated than others. It's better to make a dua in a masjid, for example. Some times are better than others. The third of the, the night, 
You know, they call it the thuluthul laylil akhir. The last third of the night is more blessed. You really have a problem? Set your clock, get up, cry to Allah. You really have issues? You need to come to the masjid, cry to Allah. Cry to Allah. In, when you have done an act of worship, imagine people going for hajj. So Allah talks about something very interesting, Surah Al-Baqarah. The dua that people make when they go for hajj. It's mentioned in the Quran. And Allah gives you two examples. Allah says, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ From among the people, there are some who only say, رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا وَمَا لَهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنْ خَلَاقًا They only say, Oh Allah, grant me, grant me, grant me regarding the dunya, regarding this world. But they have forgotten totally the hereafter. So they have no portion of the hereafter in their dua or even in reality. But then Allah says, وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَقُولُ From among the people, there are those who call out in a different way. They say, رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةً وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ O oh Allah, grant us goodness in this world and grant us goodness in the hereafter and save us from the punishment of hellfire. If you look at that dua, Allah says, أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمْ نَصِيبٌ مِّمَّا كَسَبُوا Those are the ones who will get a portion of what they have earned. They have a concern for the hereafter more than the concern for this life. so much for listening to the short message i pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope and the same applies to all of us jazakumullah khair assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh